In this session, we're going to be talking about a lab technique called thin layer chromatography that's used to separate solids from uh, mixtures. It's not only limited to, limited to the solids, you can also separate liquids as long as they are non-volatile. If you're trying to separate volatile liquids from a mixture, then distillation is going to be a better approach. Anytime when you do a chemical reaction and you make your desired product, along with a desired product, you also make a lot of side products or the impurities. And it's important to be able to separate your compound of interest from the impurities. And that's when the thin layer chromatography, also the column chromatography, would be used in those cases. So the TLC actually has two important parts. One of them is called in a stationary phase, and the second one is called in a mobile phase. So let's focus on the stationary phase first. As the name specifies, stationary means it does not move, and that's exactly what we're going to have here. We have a material that's going to be coated onto the glass or onto a plastic. The type of material as in a stationary phase that's used will be either silica gel or aluminum oxide, also called alumina. And sometimes you may see cellulose being used as well. The difference between the silica gel and aluminum oxide is silica gel is slightly acidic and aluminum oxide is slightly basic. So if you're trying to separate a compound that's actually basic in nature, and if you do use a silica gel for that, that basic compound will hold on to the silica gel stronger, and it may never come out of the stationary phase. In those cases, that's when you want to use the slightly basic alumina as your stationary phase. Same story, if you, use, if you have a compound that's acidic in nature, then it may not come out in alumina because it's basic in nature and it will hold on to that acid stronger than the neutral compounds. Uh, so for the most part, when we're doing these uh, column chromatographies uh, or the TLCs, silica gel is most commonly used. Either way, whether it's uh, um, regardless the type of uh, stationary phase, they are all going to be polar. So what that really means, if you have a compound in the mixture that's polar, it will hold on to the stationary phase with a stronger force than a compound that's nonpolar. So as a result, when it ascends onto the stationary phase, a nonpolar compound will move faster than a polar compound. So the TLC is all based on the affinity of the compounds toward the stationary phase and then also toward the mobile phase. Let's talk about the mobile phase now. So mobile phase is actually going to be the mixture of solvents that's going to be moving along the stationary phase. And the process that's being used in, in here is going to be the capillary action. A really good example of capillary action will be the water going up onto the leaves of the tree from the roots against the gravity. And that's exactly the same phenomena that's being used in the TLC here. So there are many options when it comes to picking up your mobile face, and it goes from something being nonpolar all the way to something being very polar. So I'll, let me take a few examples out of all of them. So hexane is one of them. Hexane is nonpolar. And then I can talk about... Uh, making the solvent a little bit polar, then you can start mixing your hexane with athelastate. Athelastate is polar than the hexane, so when you start adding athelastate to the hexane, it becomes slightly polar. The overall mixture is going to be slightly polar, and as if you increase the amount of athelastate, it will become more polar. If you want to pick a solvent system that's even more polar than dichloromethane, 
and methanol would be in a good option. Methanol is very polar, and as the amount of methanol increases in the mixture, the polarity of the overall mixture also, overall solvents of mixture also increases. So suppose you have this experimental setup here where I got this TLC on the left side here and I have three compounds being laid out on this line here so when you're picking up your line also called the baseline or the starting point you want to make sure you like about a, half, a quarter or a little bit less than a quarter of inches from the from the bottom of the TLC plate and suppose I got three compounds in there, not really compounds, but let's say I got three mix, three dots in there. So the first dot, which seems like to be a little bit brown in color, is going to be called a mixture one. The second dot, which seems to be a little bit black in color, it's going to be mixture two. And then this green dot, suppose that's going to be your compound of interest. And for the sake of keeping things simple, I'll call that compound A, okay? And our job is to figure out if mixture 1 and mixture 2 contain compound A or not, okay? So like I do have the colors being coded here uh, just for the sake of uh, seeing those visibly here, but organic compounds don't really have any colors, so when you putting the dots, uh, putting the organic compounds onto those baselines, and when you're trying to look at their movements, you have to use the UV lamp because the um, a lot of organic compounds are UV active as long as they have conjugated bo uh, double bonds. If, um, and then uh, move on, let's move on to this mobile phase. So this mobile phase is going to be any solvent system here and it doesn't really matter which one just assume it's some sort of uh, solvent system in there so what I'm gonna do is just put this TLC plate into this beaker that contains the mobile face and we are in this uh, let's call this one beaker one here so where we have the TLC plate inside the mixture uh, one thing you do have to make sure your this uh, your baseline or where your starting point is for the compounds and the mixtures is a little bit above than the surface of your solvents. If it goes, if your mixture is inside the solvents, then that mixture may very well dissolve into the mixtures and it will defeat the purpose of the TLC. So that's one of the reasons you always make the baseline or starting points a little bit above the bottom of the TLC plate. And then once you do that, you just go ahead and put the lid on the TLC plate because you want to make sure you do this in a closed container. And now, over time, it's going to move up. So when this starts, this uh, liquid, which is pink in color in this particular case, is going to start moving up along the station, along the TLC plate, it's also going to move the compounds that are in mixture one, mixture two, and the compound A as it's moving along. And how fast a particular compound is going to move is dependent on how great interactions the compound has between the stationary phase and the compound itself. So if you have weak interactions, it will move faster, and if you have strong interactions, it will move slower. You can say the otherwise as well. If the interactions between the mobile phase and the compounds are stronger, then it will move faster, and if the interactions between the mobile phase and the compounds are weaker, then it will hold on to the stationary phase longer, and it will not move that fast in that particular case. Okay, so then um, you just, as the time passes by, you have this mobile phase moved all the way up to a certain point, and you want to make sure it doesn't go uh, go over the TLC plate, otherwise it's gonna, you're gonna have a hard time where the, the last uh, point where the solvent was. So once it reaches fairly onto the top, make sure you have a little bit of uh, space left on the top, take out the TLC plate and this is how it's gonna look like. So now let's uh, try to kind of uh, decode this TLC plate. So remember, this was our mixture one, this was the mixture two, and this was the compound of interest A. And to 
the distance, the maximum distance your solvent has traveled will be called the solvent front. And obviously wherever your baseline was is going to be the starting point. So those two positions are very important here. Okay, so just by looking at it before we do any calculations, we can clearly see compound or mixture one has only one spot right here, and uh, it's not at the same level as that of compound A. So we can clearly say mixture one does not have compound A, or another way of saying the compound that's in mixture one is not the same as the compound A. Okay, so let's look at mixture two. When we're looking at mixture two, there are two separate dots in there. So you have one dot in mixture two that's going to be at the same level as that of the compound in mixture one. But then you also have another dot that's actually at the same level as that of compound A. So that does mean mixture two does have compound A. But in addition to do in addition to compound A, it also have impurities, which is the same as you found in mixture one. And uh, if that's the case, and if uh, if the compound A is the entrusted compound here, you can run the TLC and separate this compound from the impurities in there. So that's why this TLC is used in um, in separating the compounds. Okay, so that's one way of looking at it where you're just kind of uh, looking at the positions of the dots and comparing those with the known compound or the compound of interest. And based on that, you can tell whether you have your compound in a given mixture or not. Okay, that's one way. The second way of looking at this is by doing the calculations of RF values. So make sure you measure the distance between the starting point and the solvent front. So make sure uh, when you measure it, suppose this comes out to be five centimeters just to kind of keep things simple in terms of calculations. In addition to that, suppose this compound of interest has a distance of four centimeters. So the RF value for this compound of interest, which is A, is going to be the distance this that this compound has traveled, which is going to be four centimeters, divided by the total distance the solvent has traveled, which is also called on the top solvent front, and that's going to be five centimeters and that comes out to be 0.8. So it's just a ratio. If you have higher RF value, it usually means it's a nonpolar compound. If you have a low RF value, it usually means it's a polar compound. I can exactly do the same thing for this impurity that we have found in, uh, that we have only in mixture one and also found in mixture two. So I want to go ahead and calculate the distance between the baseline and this impurity here. And suppose that comes out to be 3 centimeters, just making up some numbers there. And RF value for that impurity would be 3 centimeters divided by 5 centimeters. It's always going to be the distance the compound has traveled divided by the distance the solvent has traveled. So this is going to be 0.6 in that particular case. Now, some of the questions, let's write that down in purity here. So some of the questions based on the RF values, a lot of times lab ask, if you change the length of the TLC plate, will the RF value change? And the answer is no. As long as your solvent system is staying the same, it doesn't matter whether you pick a longer TLC plate or a shorter TLC plate, you will have the same RF value. However, you may see a better separation when you're using a longer TLC plate. If you, however, use a different solvent system, 
instead of using, let's say, hexane only, using a mixture of hexane and ethyl acetate, then yes, we will have a different RF values for those cases. Okay, so based on that, you can tell uh, if you have the known compound and based on the position of your known compound with respect to the mixtures, you can tell if the mixture contains the compound of interest or not. So this is uh, the basics of uh, TLC, the thin layer chromatography. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.